simplifying fraction answers for lesson 112. Your objectives are to write an answer that contains a fraction in the simplest form possible and to add and subtract fractions and mixed numbers with common denominators. You will be recalling everything you know so far and uh, your, your number sense and mathematical reasoning and just recalling some of the things you've already learned and putting them into practice. You're going to do fantastic. Okay, let's get started. Answers in math problems are written in the simplest form possible. Okay? So, you want to remember to write improper fractions as mixed or whole numbers. An example, five-fourths would be one and one-fourth. Four-fourths would be one. Okay? We reduce fractions when possible. Here's our example. Two-fourths is the same as or equals one-half. Five-tenths is one-half. And always remember that rule. If the numerator is exactly half of the denominator, the answer is a half. Six-eighths is three-fourths. And remember how we did that? We divided by the um, giant, uh, well, it was like a, a one, but we went, okay, we'll go um, two by two over two. Two goes into six three times. Two goes into eight four times. Remember that? Remember that giant one? Okay. All right. And on this one, um, two-tenths equals one-fifth. Same difference here. And four-sixths is two-thirds. Okay, let's go ahead and get going. All right, so in example one, we have lots and lots of examples today. Um, we're going to see two-thirds plus two-thirds. So we add the two-thirds and the two-thirds, and we get four-thirds. We see that four-thirds is what we call an improper fraction. I'm, I'm really not a fan of that, um, but... That's the terminology you're going to get used to for now, so don't worry. And terminology just means words that we use to describe this. So basically, you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, well, um, the, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. I want to make this into a mixed number. It means that it equals more than 1. And so what we do is we just divide the denominator into the numerator, which is right here. Notice it's just a division problem. This line here just means the same as this here, division. And so the answer is 1 and 1 third because 3 goes into 4 once. And then there's 1 left over, 1 third. And a, a quick example would be this. And we'd say here's 4 thirds, 1, 2, 3, 4 thirds. This is 1 whole, this is 1 third. One and one-third. Voila! <laughs> now, in example two, you see subtract three-fourths minus one-fourth. We're going to get two-fourths. You can look at this, and because you guys are so smart and because you have so much knowledge and you've used it, great mathematical reasoning, you go, why, looky here, my numerator is exactly half of my denominator. That means it's one-half. I don't know where the southern accent came from, but let's just go with it. It was kind of fun, actually. Okie dokie. Let's look at number three. Nicholas exercises each day by walking. Well, good for him. The route, or route, he walks is three and one-thirds mile long in the morning and four and two-thirds miles in the evening. Wow. I'm impressed. How many miles does he walk altogether? All right. So we're going to add three and a third and four and two-thirds. We're going to end up with 7 and 3 thirds. We know that 3 thirds equals 1 whole. So 7 plus 1 equals 8. 8 miles, because we always have to remember to label. <laughs> All right? Not too hard. Not too hard. This is stuff you know. Let's take a look at example 4. Example 4 says add 5 and 3 fifths plus 6 and 4 fifths. Notice the Fraction denominators are the same, so this makes it not too bad. So we add 5 and 6, and we get 11. We add 3 fifths and 4 fifths, we get 7 fifths. We can look at this 7 fifths and see 
that the numerator is bigger than the denominator. That indicates that we're going to have to divide. We know that it's going to be more than one already because five-fifths is one whole. And we'll just draw a quick little picture. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's just do this. Well, we know that this, so we're going to color that whole thing in. So that's one. So we know we're going to add one whole. And then we have, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's these two left over. So there's two fifths left over. One and two fifths. So we're going to have this 11. We're going to add one and make it 12. And then we have the two fifths. Okay. See how I did that? All right, let's take a look at example five. By the way, pause this as you need to. And for some of you, you may want to, well, have me not speak. You can turn the sound down, do it yourself, or you can do it before I do it. Pause it and just kind of um, do it yourself on paper and check and see how brilliant you are. Okay, all right, here's example five. A piece of fabric, one and three-eighths yards in length, was cut from a bolt of fabric that was six and five-eighths yards long. How long is the piece of fabric that's left on this bolt of fabric? All right, well, the whole piece of fabric, the original bolt is six and five-eighths long, and we're only gonna take one and three-eighths of it. So we have six minus one, we get five. We have five-eighths minus three-eighths, we get two-eighths. Two-eighths can be reduced to lowest terms in its simplest form. I see a two, I see an eight, I know they're even numbers. I know I can divide the two eighths by two over two, right? Because whatever you do to the numerator, you do the denominator, it's that giant one thing. Two goes into two once, two goes into eight four times. I end up with five and one fi uh, fourth yards left, okay? And that's the same thing that I drew right here. I said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's two eighths right here. And that's the same as one fourth. Okay, lots of different ways to draw. And again, those are, there's a lot of you guys who have some artistic talent. A lot of times your brain really loves when you draw stuff and it helps you remember better. Okay, so this is not a problem, but um, I just think it's kind of an interesting way to figure it out. This stuff's kind of fun. Okay, so let's take a look at lesson practice. Okay, so if we look at four fifths plus we, and we add four fifths, we're going to end up with eight fifths. We need to simplify that. Okay, so we divide the five into eight. It goes in one time, and there's three left over. Three what? Three fifths. Okay, if you need to draw that, please feel free. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at five sixths, and we're going to take away one sixth. Five minus one equals four sixths. Okay, so now can we simplify that? Yes, we have an even number and an even number, so we know we can divide by two over two. Okay, and we're going to end up with 2 goes into 4 um, 2 times, and 2 goes into 6 3 times, and we're going to end up with 2 thirds. Make sense? Okay, take your time. Remember, you're doing this with me. Okay, so on this one, there are different ways you can do this. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the basic way. So we have 3 and 2 thirds and 1 and 2 thirds. We add the 3 and 1 and we get 4. And we add the 2 thirds and 2 thirds and we get 4 thirds. We know that 4 thirds is the same as 1 and 1 third. We can see that right here. Here's 1 whole, here's 1 third. Okay? So, 3 goes into 4 once, and there's what's left over is 1 third. Does that make sense? 
I just did it kind of like that. All right, three goes into four once. One times three is three, and it's one third left over. Getting a little crowded looking. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at C. Three and two thirds plus one and two thirds. Hold on a sec. Oopsie, I did that twice. Never mind. Let's go to D. Five and one fourth plus six and three fourths. Five and six is going to be 11. One and three is going to be four fourths. Four fourths equals one whole. So we're going to add one to the 11 and get 12. Okay? Seven and seven eighths minus one and one eighth. Well, seven minus one is six. Seven minus one is six eighths. I can see that this is even, so I'm going to be able to divide by two. So I'm going to keep my six, but I'm going to divide by two over two, the fraction. Two goes into six three times. Two goes into eight four times. Notice that I said I can see that they're even, therefore I can divide. Okay, that's something to keep in your head. Okay, and so the answer should be six and three fourths, and it is. Okay, and F is five and three fifths plus one and three fifths, and that's going to equal five plus one is six. Three plus three is six fifths. You can look at this and go, well, five fifths is one, and there's going to be one left over. So that's seven and one fifths. Some of you will not be able to look at that and say there's going to be one left over. So you just do a quick little five goes to six one time, and then your brain goes, oh, yeah, I get it. And you get one left over, one fifth. So you have six plus one and one fifth, and it's still going to equal seven and one fifth. Okay? All right. And now let's take a look here. We have for G four and three tenths, and we're going to take away three and one tenth. Four minus three is going to be one, and three tenths minus one tenth is going to be two tenths. I look at this and I say, well, two and ten are even numbers. That means they can be reduced to a simpler form. I can divide by two. And I'm going to end up with 2 divided into 2 goes 1 time, 2 divided into 10 goes 5 times, and my answer is 1 and 1 fifth. All right? Now, I think, yep, there we are. All right, so we have H, and we have 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. That's going to equal 6 fourths. We have 4 goes into 6. And it goes in one time, and there's two-fourths left over. I look at the two-fourths. I see that they're both even numbers. I also look at this, and I go, wait a minute. Two is exactly half of four, so my answer is going to be one and one-half. Okay? And then on I, we have five-eighths minus one-eighth. That's going to give us five minus one is four-eighths. We look at this, and we go, again, looky here. The 4 is exactly half of 8. The answer is going to be 1 half. Hooray! Not bad. Take your time. I want you to get your written practice done and enjoy your increased brain power. Okay? At this point, your heads should be actually swelling. You will find that your hats no longer fit. But it's good. Have a great, great, great day and a happy, happy math day.